Uh, but we are also joined in the studio by Stephanie Kerwin from Aurora Wellness. And you said something really interesting about sleep being one of the foundations of wellness, um, Stephanie. And I think for so many reasons, people really scrimp on sleep nowadays and get by on very, very little. Um, how much sleep do we actually need? Well, that depends on the person, but certainly around seven to nine hours for an average adult is something to base it on, yes. And what's very important is not just how many hours you sleep, it's the quality of your sleep and if you're waking during the night as well, because we really do need that consistent sleep. It's very, very important. There's so many functions that happen it during the night when we are asleep, for example, that's the time when our liver's working the hardest. That's the time when a lot of our detoxification pathways are very active and our body's detoxifying. That's the time where our body goes into a lot of repair. And how I explain it to people, if your body's like a battery with 100% in, your body's not going to do things and repair properly when you're active and you're awake and you're digesting food and you're stressed and you're trying to get the kids to school and all the other things that you do during the day. So when you're asleep and you're resting, that's when your nervous system's restoring. That's when a lot of your neurotransmitters, which are the chemicals that make you happy, like serotonin and dopamine, that's when they're produced. That's when a lot of the repair processes are done. So if you're not sleeping well, it's having a significant impact in almost every function of your body. The problem is, I think a lot of people know that and worrying about not sleeping possibly makes them not sleep very well. And we know that we shouldn't have screens um, an hour or so before bedtime. But if people are in that habit of waking up for whatever reason, of not getting good quality sleep, what could you help them with? What would you advise? Well, again, it's looking for the cause of why that person's not, not sleeping. So, for example, the cause might be because they're in pain. So in our clinic, I work my husband, Paul, who's an acupuncturist. So a lot of people come in in a significant amount of pain. So if the, if pain's the reason that they're not sleeping, we might help help with that. It might be, as we said, like poor dietary choices, maybe drinking too much caffeine like coffee or Coca-Cola during the day. Um, melatonin production is, rely is, is very high at night time. So you mentioned about the screens, Beth. Well, when you actually have that blue light penetrating through your eyes, it actually affects the production of melatonin, which is also called the sleep hormone. So if somebody's just screening it all evening and then they're not sleeping, that might be the cause. It might be because they're very stressed or they've had a current trauma or the loss of somebody. Maybe they're going through... Um, a, a troublesome time at work maybe they're having problems with a relationship so it's really looking to find the cause of those sleep disturbances rather than just giving them a herb or a nutritional medicine to help knock them out if that makes sense oh, in some cases though i'm thinking of new parents for example their sleep is completely disrupted and very often they have to go on on very small amounts of sleep is there anything you can do in that sort of instance well then <laughs> I was one of those parents. I felt absolutely demented. Um, my son's eight and a half. I think I'm only just recovering from the three and a half years lack of sleep. I certainly wish I'd um, employed or hired a holistic sleep practitioner, somebody like Laura Cooley on the island that's helping parents get some, you know, their children get some good quality sleep. But the other thing to remember is, is that there are, when there's new mums, like you mentioned, there are hormones that actually help you cope with lack of sleep. So some mums bottle feed and someone's breastfeed that's fine but for example for a breastfed baby um, when the mother wakes up they're producing a lot of oxytocin which is the love hormone and then that does help them cope a little bit a bit better with the sleepless nights so a short period of time of sleepless nights is fine it's when it becomes very prolonged